Well, in many parts of the world, the American minimum wage sounds like a fortune. But $7.25 an hour does not buy much in the United States, especially if you're trying to buy a house and feed a family at the same time. So it's a big deal that the city council of Los Angeles voted to more than double the federal minimum wage over the next few years. By fact, by 2020, it will be $15 an hour. Well, L.A. joins other cities seeking to lift up the working class by raising up their wages. Employers don't like it, but the trend is definitely clear. More than half the states in America have mandated wages higher than the federal amount. I think that was $10.10. Nicholas Fortuna is an employment law attorney. Uh, I guess the question here is, that, that, and I was saying during the break here, there are a lot of unknowns. I mean, it certainly it's a good thing in a city like Los Angeles, but say in a city like Sacramento, where the mayor, Kevin Johnson, who's president of U.S. mayors, is pushing this there. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is there, the cost of living and then housing is not as high. And some say that might cripple an already struggling economy. I, I think that the evidence is, is the opposite. The multiplier effect of the increased wages going into the economy creates more jobs. Just the, if the minimum wage were raised across the country from 725, which is the federal minimum wage, to $9 an hour, $21 billion in additional revenue would go into the economy. In the low wage worker situation, they spend almost all of the money they have. They have a zero savings rate. So all of that money would go back into the economy. And some studies have shown for every extra billion dollars, there's 4,000 jobs created. But, you know, I, I got to tell you, Nick, on one hand, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that live paycheck to paycheck. Let's just talk about a struggling middle class here. Right. The issue is, look, and, and don't get me wrong, I think everybody, including myself, wants to see people make more money. Uh, but what about the small business owners? They may get a little break here uh, for, for employers that have 25 employees or less. Nevertheless, a lot of small businesses are complaining, hey, we can't afford this. It, there's another way to look at it. Right now, the federal and state governments are subsidizing those small businesses, or even large businesses, Walmarts, mm. fast food industry. $153 billion in public assistance goes to low or minimum wage workers every year. Uh, so Medicaid, food stamps, these people cannot afford to support their own family. Family of three, the poverty level is nineteen thousand mm. dollars. If you're making minimum wage, you're only making a little over fifteen thousand. But Nicholas, the question still remains: In LA, okay, some would say we can see that, but in a smaller city, uh, do they really need to raise a minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, where the economy perhaps may not support it, and perhaps may not need it? Under under any circumstances, so LA, fifty percent of the workers are minimum wage workers. That's an incredible percentage, mm -hmm. but. You know, to your point, each city is a little different. The cost of living is a little different. If you do cost of living adjustments as to the minimum wage, you might not have to go as high as L.A. But pointing out L.A., L.A. is not really that high. At $12 an hour, there's still families that are going to receive public assistance. And this is phased in over five years. So by the time you get to the fifth year, inflation is going to eat away at that $15. But there is an argument to be made that regionally it could be at different levels because the cost of living is different. Right now, though, 725 doesn't support anyone in any region. You know, I, I got to tell you, Nicholas, I just wonder if, 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 if uh, uh, the United States is in a, a huge morass here. Because you talk about federal subsidies uh, for some of these small businesses, but here you have a country right now that has a, a huge deficit that's fighting to, to, to pay it off, to get it down, and now you're talking about paying out more money through the federal government. Where does it stop? You know, well, actually, I was saying something slightly different, is that currently we're paying $153 billion in public assistance. So mm -hmm. if we raise the wages for those workers, that number would decrease substantially. Okay. You know, because no longer would federal government be paying Medicaid for working, working people who are working full time. No longer would they be collecting food stamps. They'd be able to buy their own food. You know, at this point, I think, I think it's fundamentally unfair that, 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 that businesses, and I represent employers, sure. businesses um, are able to cut the wages so low that their workers can't feed themselves. Mm -hmm. um, in the circumstance where uh, if, if they if they pay their workers well enough, do we really need to pay 
buy a hamburger for 90 cents, why can't we buy, pay a dollar right, and a quarter right, for a hamburger? Right. It's, it's the discounters. Yeah. Well, look, you know, I, look, I certainly didn't mean to press you too hard on this. No, side, no, because you, I, you, no, because I think I, it's a good thing here. Yeah. But once again, there, there are certainly situations that are unknown. I think you've explained some of it. I don't know if you've explained all of it, but, you know, at least it's a good start. And uh, people should be getting, I, I would assume, paying, getting paid more than what they're, they're paying now. Nicholas Fortuna, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. All righty.